Violet, Klaus, and Sunny. By the time you read this note, my life will be at its end. My heart is as cold as Ike, and I find life unbearable. I know your children may not understand the sad life of a dowager or what would have led me to this desperate act, but please know that I am much happier this way. As my last will and testament, I leave you three in the care of Captain Sham, a kind and honorable man. Please think of me kindly, even though I had done this terrible thing. Your Aunt Josephine. Stop it! Violet cried. Stop reading out loud, Klaus! We already know what it says! I just can't believe it, Klaus said, turning the paper around for the upteenth time. The Baudelaire orphans were sitting glumly around the dining room table with a cold lime stew in bowls and dread in their hearts. Violet had called Mr. Poe and told him what had happened, and the Baudelaires, too anxious to sleep, had stayed up the whole night waiting for him to arrive on the first fickle ferry of the day. The candles were almost completely burned down, and Klaus had to lean forward to read Aunt Josephine's note. There's something funny about this note, but I can't put my finger on it. How can you say such a thing? Violet asked. Aunt Josephine has thrown herself out the window. There's nothing funny about it at all. Not funny as in a funny joke, Klaus said. Funny as in a funny smell. Why, in the very first sentence, she says, My life will be at its end. Now it is, Violet said, shuddering. That's not what I mean, Klaus said impatiently. She uses its, I-T apostrophe S, which always means it is. But you wouldn't say my life will be at it is end. She means I-T-S, belonging to it. He picked up Captain Sham's business card, which was still lying on the table. Remember when she saw this card? Every bird has its own sail. She said it was a serious grammatical error. Who cares about grammatical errors? Violet asked. When Aunt Josephine has jumped out the window. But Aunt Josephine would have cared, Klaus pointed out. That's what she cared about most, grammar. Remember, she said it was the greatest joy in life. Well, it wasn't enough, Violet said sadly. No matter how much she liked Grandma, it says she found her life unbearable. But that's another error in the note, Klaus said. It doesn't say unbearable with a U, it says unbearable with an I. You're being unbearable with a U, Violet cried. And you are being stupid with an S, Klaus snapped. I get, Sunny shrieked, which meant something along the lines of, Please stop fighting! Violet and Klaus looked at their baby sister, and then at one another. Oftentimes, when people are miserable, they will want to make other people miserable too, but it never helps. I'm sorry, Klaus, Violet said meekly. You're not unbearable, our situation's unbearable. I know, Klaus said miserably. I'm sorry too, you're not stupid, Violet, you're very clever. In fact, I hope you're clever enough to get us out of this situation. Aunt Josephine has jumped out the window and left us in the care of Captain Sham. I don't know what we can do about it. Well, Mr. Poe's on his way, Violet said. He said on the phone that he'll be here first thing in the morning, so we don't have long to wait. Maybe Mr. Poe could be of some help. I guess so, Klaus said. But he and his sisters looked at one another and sighed. They knew that the chances of Mr. Poe being of much help were rather slim. When the Baudelaires lived with Count Olaf, Mr. Poe was not helpful when the children told him about Count Olaf's cruelty. When the Baudelaires lived with Uncle Monty, Mr. Poe was not helpful when the children told him about Count Olaf's treachery. It seemed clear that Mr. Poe would not be of any help in this situation either. One of the candles burned out in a small puff of smoke, and the children sank down lower in their chairs. You probably know of a plant called the Venus flytrap, which grows in the tropics. The top of the plant is shaped like an open mouth, with tooth-like spines around the edges. When a fly, attracted by the smell of the flower, lands on the Venus flytrap, the mouth of the plant begins to close, trapping the fly. 
The terrified fly buzzes around the closed mouth of the plant, but there is nothing it can do, and the plant slowly, slowly dissolves the fly into nothing. As the darkness of the house closed in around them, the Baudelaire youngsters felt like the fly in this situation. It was as if the disastrous fire that took the lives of their parents had been the beginning of a trap, and they hadn't even known it. They buzzed from place to place. Count Olaf's house in the city, Uncle Monty's home in the country, and now Aunt Josephine's house overlooking the lake. But their own misfortune always closed around them, tighter and tighter, and it seemed to the three siblings that before too long, they would dissolve away to nothing. We could rip up the note, Klaus said finally. Then Mr. Poe wouldn't know about Aunt Josephine's wishes, and we wouldn't end up with Captain Sham. But I already told Mr. Poe that Aunt Josephine left a note, Violet said. Oh, we could do a forgery, Klaus said, using a word which here means write something yourself and pretend somebody else wrote it. We'll give everything she wrote, but we'll leave out the part about Captain Sham. Aha! Sunny shrieked. This word was a favorite of Sunny's, and unlike most of her words, it needed no translation. What Sunny meant was, Aha! An expression of discovery. Of course! Violet cried. That's what Captain Sham did! He wrote this letter, not Aunt Josephine! Behind his glasses, Klaus's eyes lit up. That explains it! That explains unbearable! Leap! Sunny shrieked, which probably meant, Captain Sham threw Aunt Josephine out the window and wrote this note to hide his crime. What a terrible thing to do, Klaus said, shuddering as he thought of Aunt Josephine falling into the lake she feared so much. Imagine the terrible things he'll do to us, Violet said. If we don't expose his crime, I can't wait till Mr. Poe gets here so we can tell him what happened. With perfect timing, the doorbell rang, and the Baudelaire's hurried to answer it. Violet led her siblings down the hallway, looking wistfully at the radiator, as she remembered how afraid of it Aunt Josephine was. Klaus followed closely behind, touching each doorknob gently in memory of Aunt Josephine's warnings about them shattering into pieces. And when they reached the door, Sunny looked mournfully at the welcome mat that Aunt Josephine thought could cause someone to break their neck. Aunt Josephine had been so careful to avoid anything that she thought might harm her, but that harm had still come her way. Violet opened the peeling white door, and there stood Mr. Poe in the gloomy light of dawn. Mr. Poe, Violet said. She intended to tell him immediately of their forgery theory, but as soon as she saw him, standing in the doorway with a white handkerchief in one hand and a black briefcase in the other, her words stuck in her throat. Tears are curious things, for like earthquakes or puppet shows, they can occur at any time, without any warning, and without good reason. Mr. Poe, Violet said again, and without any warning, she and her siblings burst into tears. Violet cried, her shoulders shaking with sobs, and Klaus cried, the tears making his glasses slip down his nose. And Sunny cried, her open mouth revealing her four teeth. Mr. Poe put down his briefcase and put away his handkerchief. He was not very good at comforting people, but he put his arms around the children the best he could and murmured, There, there. Which is a phrase some people murmur to comfort other people, despite the fact that it didn't really mean anything. Mr. Poe couldn't think of anything else to say that might have comforted the Baudelaire orphans, but I wish now that I had the power to go back in time and speak to these three sobbing children. If I could, I could tell the Baudelaires that, like earthquakes and puppet shows, their tears were occurring not only without warning, but without good reason. The youngsters were crying, of course, because they thought Aunt Josephine was dead and I wish I had the power to go back and tell them that they were wrong. But of course, I cannot. I, I am not on the top of the hill overlooking Lake Lacrimos on that gloomy morning. I am sitting in my room in the middle of the night 
writing down this story and looking out my window at the graveyard behind my home. I cannot tell the Baudelaire orphans that they are wrong, but I can tell you, as the orphans cry in Mr. Poe's arms, that Aunt Josephine is not dead. Not yet.